We need to look at what happens when we solve equations with more than one operation, because it's going to happen often. For instance, in this problem, we know we need to get x alone. Who's keeping x from being alone? The 3 is, he's multiplying x, and the 7, he's adding to x, if you would. Which one do I get rid of first? We know from the past that order counted. At first thought, you, you hopefully go right back to say, well, the answer here is to use the order of operations. Well, remember, we use the order of operations to do a problem. Remember the order of operations? The first thing we do is parentheses, and if there's more than one parentheses, we work left to right. Then we do exponents, and once again, left to right amongst ties. Then we do any multiplications and divisions. Now remember, you don't always do multiplication before division. It's just that if there's more than one, you'll, you know, amongst multiplication and division, you'll work left to right. Same thing with addition and subtraction. And the last thing we do is simplify any fraction. Well, that's to do a problem. We're going to go in that order. When we solve an equation, we're not really doing a problem. We're still going to use the order of operations. But we're undoing a problem. We're getting rid of things to get x alone. So we're actually going to follow the order of operations backwards. Yes, you do need to know, as we told you before, the order of operations forwards and backwards. Later on in the course, actually, the first thing we'll do to solve an equation with a fraction is get rid of the fraction. But we're not going to do that just yet. So hopefully you can see the first thing we're going to do is get rid of any additions and subtractions, because we're working backwards, and then we'll get rid of the multiplications and divisions. Recall that we are trying to get the variable alone. So we're undoing various operations. Remember how to undo operations? The opposite of addition is subtraction. The opposite of subtraction, quite obviously, is addition. What about the others? The opposite of multiplication, even negative multiplication, is division. And the opposite of division, we'll see later, is multiplication. Okay, let's take a look at this. And we're going to get x alone by following the order of operations backwards. Well, we see that we have two numbers, if you would, keeping x from being alone, the 3 and the 7. We're going to do the order of operations backwards, so we're going to get rid of our addition first. The opposite of addition is subtraction. Of course, if I do it on one side, I have to do it on the other. So let's compute this. The 7 will, in fact, go away. And 43 minus 7, we have 3x equals 36. Now the only troublemaker we have to get rid of is the 3. He's multiplying, so I'll do the opposite. I'll divide. That's the way I like to write it. Have to do it on both sides. 3 divided by 3 is 1, isn't it? So you could write a 1, but remember the point of this was to get rid of uh, anything in front of x. And 1 times x is just x. So there it is. The answer is x equals 12. And if we take 12 and put it back into the original equation, 4x will have 3 times 12, which is 36, plus 7, and that does in fact equal 43. So this is the one and only solution of this equation. Now I want to give you a little hint in problems like this. They're going to get longer than this, and they're going to get messier. So let's plan for that and line up your equal signs. See what I mean? 
See how I've lined up the equal signs? That'll kind of organize my problem so I won't be adding two things on the same side. Always one on one side and one on the other. So please line up your equal signs. Okay, let's try another here. Now we have two troublemakers, 2.6 and negative 5.2. Think about it, which one are we going to get rid of first? We're going to follow the order of operations backwards. 2.6 is multiplying, and the 5.2 is subtracting. So we're going to, the order of operations backwards would have us get rid of the addition and subtraction first. We'll get rid of subtraction with addition. Of course, I have to do it on both sides. And I compute. The 5.2's go away. And I get 2.6b equals 23.4. Now, i got to get rid of that 2.6. He's multiplying, so I'll divide. Got to do it on both sides. Doing the division, I won't do that for you here. I'm going to get 2.6 divided by 2.6 is 1, isn't it? We don't write the 1. We say B, in this case, is 9. And that son of a gun is your solution and your one and only solution to this equation. How about this one? Now this one has two variables. We need to get the variable alone, but we can't get both of them alone. So what we do here is combine them. And I want to show you two kinds of combinations. When two things are on the same side of the equal sign, for instance these two numbers are on the same side, you can just put them together. But when two things are on different sides, for instance the minus 2z and the 3z, you can't put them together because they're on different sides. So guess what we have to do? We have to kill one of them. Here's one way to do it. Holy well, we have to decide which one, and I'll tell you, it really doesn't matter which one. There's one easier way, but it really doesn't matter. Wait a minute, 99. That gives me an idea. I'm going to kill, in this example, the 3z by subtracting 3z. Of course if I do it on that side I have to do it on the left side and I can only do it to who he's a like term with. So I like to line it up with the minus 2z. See how the 3z's go away? I've actually killed one of them and I don't want to say I brought it over I added its opposite to the other side. Now 37 is not a troublemaker. I have two troublemakers, minus 5 and 7. And which do I get rid of first? I hope you know I'm going to get rid of that 7 first. I'm following the order of operations backwards to get the variable by itself. Do it to both sides. Now all I have to do is get rid of the minus 5. Be careful here. There's not going to be a plus 5. That minus 5 is multiplying. So I divide to both sides, and I get, son of a gun, z equals negative 6. Recall that 30, positive 30, divided by negative 5 is negative 6. So that's how you do it when you have things on the same side that are alike, we combine them, and then on different sides, we kill one of them. I have one last tip I want to show you about a problem like this. We have some options and let's put those options to work. First of all, I'm, I'm definitely going to put the 42 and the minus 5 together first. So that's the same. But at this point in the problem, last time, I subtracted a 3z from both sides. And that's fine and it worked out. But it led to a negative number. I don't mean a negative answer, I mean dividing by a negative number, and many of us aren't very good at that. Another option, is, since it doesn't matter which one I kill here, I always tell people, always pick on the little guy. Always pick on the little guy. That, usually you can beat him up 
better than you can beat up the big guy. Who's littler here? Minus 2z or 3z? Certainly the negative number is littler. Watch what I do here. Instead of killing the 3z, I'm going to kill the minus 2z by adding a 2z. Of course, if I do it there, I have to do it on the other side. Seems fair, doesn't it? Now, the 7 isn't bothering me at all, is it? I have two troublemakers, two different troublemakers, the 37 and the 5. But I don't have a negative 5. So if you pick on the little guy, you won't up, end up with a negative, per se. You may get a negative answer, but you won't end up with dividing by a negative, and that's going to be an advantage in the future. Now let's get rid of this 37 by subtracting 37 from both sides. I'll get a negative 30. Now, what do I have to do with this 5? He's multiplying. So I'll do the opposite. I'll divide. Got to do it to both sides. And I get z. Of course, I get the same answer. z equals negative 6. Always read the variable first. Get used to that. That'll be important in later chapters when we talk about inequalities. Okay? So what I'm saying here... You're going to get the same answer anyway. So since it doesn't matter, and as long as you treat both sides the same, always pick on the little guy. That's going to help you later on. Okay? And always line up your equal signs. See what I mean by starting to get messy? Line up your equal signs. Get busy with that homework.